So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us. Thank you for taking time out of your day for our Salesforce admins webinar, how to build an app exchange strategy. I'm so excited to be joined today by two amazing people. First person joining us is Bill Martinez. He's the lead Salesforce admin at Zaxis. And Connie D, product marketing manager for App Exchange. Uh, you can follow Connie on Twitter at Connie D11. My name is Mike Gerhold. I am director admin evangelist at Salesforce. And you can follow me on Twitter at Mike Gerhold. Now, it wouldn't be a Salesforce admins webinar without a forward-looking statement. So just a reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company and please make all of your purchasing decisions based on current features and functionality. Of course, we like to be social as awesome admins and we hope you can be social with us. So you can follow us on Twitter at Salesforce admins, no I, and you can connect with other awesome admins using the hashtag awesome admin. If you're on Facebook, you can find our page Salesforce admins. And of course, jump on over to LinkedIn. We also have a page over there as well. It's Salesforce admins. We make things nice and easy and videos. Oh, we have so many awesome videos on YouTube. You can find us at Salesforce admins. Now, during the webinar, you may have questions and I completely understand. So we're going to make question and answer super easy for you. If you jump over in the success community to Salesforce admins webinar, you can ask your question there. If you're not already logged into the Salesforce success community, just go to bit.ly backslash admin webinar group. Now, you don't have to wait till the very end of the webinar to ask your question. We have people standing by who can jump in and start answering right away. And I would say take a second to scroll through and see what's being asked. Oftentimes, there's a lot of the same question. Now, I will say this. Be sure to stick around for the very end where we'll do live Q&A with Connie and Bill. So with that, I'm going to hand off our agenda to Connie. Thanks so much, Mike. Hi everyone, so excited to be here today. Um, just a quick overview of sort of how we're going, what we're going to talk about today. First and foremost, just a really brief introduction to App Exchange. I'm sure most of you are familiar with who you are, but for those of us who are brand new to us, we'll give a little bit of um, an intro on what App Exchange is all about. After that, we'll sort of dive into what exactly do we mean when we say an App Exchange strategy, and then we'll dive deep into sort of five steps to help you think through how you could build a strategy on your own. And then, of course, we'll quickly talk about some resources. Um, along the way, um, I will sort of be giving an overview, sort of from a best practice perspective on how we see things on the Salesforce and App Exchange side. But we'll, Bill is going to continue to sort of weave in a bunch of different tips and best practices from an admin perspective. Um, so really, really excited to sort of showcase what he has to share today. So starting off, what is App Exchange? So for those of you who are brand new to us, App Exchange is Salesforce's App Store. So just like Apple has iTunes and Google has Play, Salesforce has App Exchange. So we are the leading business app marketplace with over 3,000 apps and over 300 components that have been installed more than 4 million times. One of the really great things about the apps on App Exchange is they are customized for Salesforce. So um, it saves a little bit of time from a sort of implementation and sort of data integration standpoint. All of the apps that are listed on App Exchange need, go through a security review so that um, you know that they're trusted and secure, so it minimizes risks of your data. And then lastly, all of our apps are reviewed by peers. So we have over 60,000 reviews on App Exchange. So not only do you know that these apps have been used by other members of our community, um, but it's also a great place to sort of figure out how else to get the best value out of these apps. So shifting over to um, the main topic, an app exchange strategy. What do we mean when we say an app exchange strategy? On our end, we look at this as sort of a holistic end-to-end -end game plan that aligns your business strategy with your app exchange solutions. So that could be your app, that could be components, or even a combination. Or another way to think about it is 
starting from your business idea or the challenge that you're dealing with at hand, thinking through the app exchange solution that you're going to implement, but then, of course, thinking about what happens after you install. So maintaining it going forward, measuring its impact and effectiveness, and also thinking about how you could scale that app um, or component as your organization also grows. So more importantly, why does an app exchange strategy matter? Uh, from our perspective, we think that it's a great way to, for you to even to make sure that you are getting the highest value apps into your orgs without duplicating functionality or just investing in something that you won't need. Um, even just putting a few minutes into putting some thought around um, a strategy will help guide you to make sure that you're finding apps that not only solve immediate needs, but also align with your organization's roadmap, so sort of on that vein of being able to scale along as your company grows. Um, and then just sort of, again, post-installation is just as important as pre-installation. So that's one of the things that we want to highlight here that, you know, we often talk a lot about sort of how to get to the right app to install, um, but we don't talk a ton about what happens after install, so we want to shine a little bit of light there. And before we sort of dive deeper into the five steps, Bill, really quickly, um, why do you think an app exchange strategy matters? Hi, Connie. Thank you very much for handing off to me. So um, app exchange is very important to me in my day to day. As an administrator, I get requests to solve business problems. And instead of us trying to build that application in house, we go to the app exchange and it's just quicker to market for us. Awesome. So let's dive in a little deeper into how we can actually go help about building an app exchange strategy. So five steps. Um, to sort of go about this, so it should be quick and easy depending on how fast you need to turn around the solution. So first is just uh, identifying some stakeholders. Second, identifying just the actual business need and pain that you're trying to solve for. Third, of course, going to App Exchange to find some apps, but also trying them out in a sandbox or a DE org, which we can talk about more. Four, of course, going through your evaluation and decision process. And then five, finally installing, but then on that post-installation process, documenting and maintaining going forward. So let's dive a little deeper into each of the steps. So the first step is to identify the stakeholders. Who are you going to be working with throughout this entire process, and who is experiencing sort of the pains that you're trying to solve for? So we like to think about stakeholders in sort of a two in sort of two buckets. The first is who is identifying who is your primary stakeholder. So who is the person or the persons who are feeling the biggest pain, and who will feel the biggest impact by the final app um, that you decide to install into your org. But of course, especially in today's organization, um, we're constantly collaborating across different lines and different departments, so we don't want to forget about our other partners or our secondary stakeholders. So you do want to make sure that you're also identifying other departments that will also be indirectly impacted by the final solution you implement. So, Bill, um, when you think about stakeholders, sort of what are some good best practices here um, to make sure that you're identifying everybody and the right people before you start moving on? Connie, this is really, really important. So what I do is I look for someone who uh, has the power as an executive sponsor. An authority could spend those dollars. So the project could uh, be as quick as you know a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. These champions and sponsors they're the ones that indicate if the project was successful or not. They're the ones who get us the resources to kind of um, move through the project pain points. We kind of don't know what we don't know, and as we're, we're working the projects, we may hit certain roadblocks, and they're the ones that will clear those roadblocks pretty quickly. Um, I think an executive sponsor is probably one of the most important parts of project planning. Awesome. Really, really great tip there. So then once you've identified all your stakeholders, you've identified your executive sponsor, step two is then identifying the business need and the pain. So this is really around collecting requirements. Um, here, on, here we're just outlining a few um, questions to sort of help you through the collection process. You want to make sure you're identifying, you know, what are the business problems you're trying to solve? What are the main pain points right now that your stakeholders are feeling? How many users are going to need to use this app that you're going to eventually implement? And also, what's your budget and what's the timeline that you're operating within? So 
Bill, turning back to you, you know, I know often when you're going through these requirements, um, you have a really great um, sort of rule of thumb on how you like to go about this. So you want to share that a little bit with how you go about collecting requirements? I'd love to share that with the group, Connie. So one of the things is, as an administrator, we get multiple requests from multiple individuals, departments, regions, markets, and whatnot. It, I, for lack of a better term, it's a little bit of chaos. So I use what I call the three pillars of evaluating the business needs and prioritization for a project. And those three pillars are, I just I make sure that the project drives revenue for the organization. Secondly, it reduces inefficiencies through process improvement. So it's actually saving the company some hard dollars. And then there's that generic maintenance. As admins, we have to create users. We do data deduping and cleansing. So that's, just, that's kind of like our day to day. Um, but once again, these three pillars are make sure that the project is bringing revenue in and that it aligns with the organization's vision. The worst thing you want to do is work a project that's not in line with the company vision and where it wants to go. Great. Really awesome. So then moving on to step three, then of course, once you've identified all the people that you're working with, understand what their needs and pain are. Of course, it's time to go to App Exchange and look at some apps that you want to consider um, to sort of implement. And one of the biggest things that we want to highlight here on this step is to try out the app in either a sandbox or in a developer org um, as a way to sort of help you evaluate which is the right app for you. And so for folks who are a little uh, less familiar with sort of the difference between a sandbox and a developer org, the sandbox is a copy of your production org that can be used for testing or for training or for development. But the nice thing about this is that you can sort of be able to get a chance to sort of play around with the data and with the app without actually making any sort of impact on your actual live production org. Um, depending on your Salesforce edition, you may have to pay for this. So that's just something to think about. If you're looking for something that's a free option, that's where developer orgs are something good to think about. Um, so they are free, but you start with a blank slate. So you'll have to do a little bit of work up front to sort of get it all set up before you can install the app in there and sort of also um, do some testing to sort of see what the app can do for you. But either way, definitely highly recommend that you install apps into either a sandbox or a dev org um, as a part of your evaluation process. A few things to think about. If you go the sandbox route, Typically, the evaluation period you have to use a sandbox is about two weeks. And through this process, you just also want to check that the app does not interfere with any other apps that you have already have installed in your org, and also look for duplicate functionality. So Bill, you know, I know you are a big fan of sort of installing into a sandbox. Um, do you have any sort of quick tips for the group? You know, two weeks is not the longest amount of time, and you want to make sure you get all the testing you want before you decide. Do you have any tips to share on that end? I do, Connie. And one of the strategies I do use is uh, I do use developer orgs. And then if I'm evaluating multiple applications, I'll install them in each developer org. However, I think one of the most important things is to build that relationship with the salesperson and the pre-sales engineer. We're not experts at everything. Um, no one really knows everything. And if you're evaluating an application that you're just not familiar with, that's where your pre-sales engineer and your salesperson is going to kind of get it installed in the sandbox quickly so you can demo it to your business user. One of the things I do is I look how flexible and how quickly I can improve, the, uh, how quickly I can install that application into a sandbox, and then I can gauge the difficulty to maintaining it long term. Great. Um, really awesome tip. I think especially super helpful when admins are installing a little bit more of a robust solution. You know, I think one of the things um, I wanted to sort of talk about more also is, you know, I think often admins are trying to solve a challenge in a very quick timeline. Um, you know, what are some ways to also cut some time up front with doing research on picking the apps that you want to bring to the table? So I do, um, I go on the App Exchange, and what I do is I spend about 15 minutes on the App Exchange, 15 to 20 minutes weekly, and I kind of preemptively look at all the applications in the event a business need was to arise. 
I think as humans, one of the things we do is we take too much direction from up above and say, hey, we have a problem here. Can you solve it? You kind of have to have a toolkit underneath your belt of different applications. Even before that business case comes to you, you should know what applications do what so that you can say, hey, I looked at the app exchange and I know one or two apps that, that can meet this business need. Awesome. Really great tip. Um, moving on to step four. So once you sort of figure it out, what three apps you want to think about, you've installed them a little bit, now it's time to sort of make your decision and choose one. And we know there's this whole long list of potential criteria that you think about when you're thinking about what apps to, in, to install. You know, of course you want to make sure that the app meets the business needs. Does it also meet your security requirements? And is it compatible with your Salesforce edition? Don't want to forget about price, of course. Um, that's also a big factor. Um, does it provide the right type of functionality that you need right now and maybe later down the road um, that allows it to easily scale with your org? Um, and so and to kind of go back to Bill's point around doing in, invest, some investing some time in App Exchange and the solutions out there, is this an app that's recommended by your community? Um, have others used it? And of course, you can also look at the average customer rating on the list and just sort of think about um, how the app's been working for others. And so, of course, this is just a, just a really short list of many others that you can think about. So, Bill, when you're thinking about sort of which criteria to consider and which ones to put more weight on, sort of how do you go about doing that when you're in these scenarios? So one of the things you should do, the same way you're building that relationship with the sales individual and pre-sales engineer on the application, really understand your stakeholders, what they're trying to get to. Continuously challenge them, because sometimes the business thinks they know what they want, but as you ask them over and over and you really dive deep on what the business challenge is, um, sometimes walking into a project and walking out of a project, they can be to totally different things. So my recommendation is really put weight on a business challenge. Determine what the criteria is and prioritize those decision processes. Make sure that your stakeholders are actively engaged in the application process. We tend to be a technologist, uh, look at all the bells and whistles and, and like the really good stuff that an application could do, but make sure it meets your business needs prior to just buying an application because of its functionality. Thanks, Bill. I, what I really like about your tip is it actually sort of brings some of the earlier steps full circle um, and sort of sh shines the importance around even just doing a little bit of um, um, identifying around the stakeholders and sort of the requirements and business needs. So love the tip. So then finally, of course, step five is we install the final app that's chosen. Um, and beyond that, of course, making sure that you think about other things post-install. So of course, um, depending, no matter whether it's just a couple users or many, you want to make sure you get your users ready. So you want to communicate that this change is happening, um, give them sort of a timeline, and also outline any prep you may need them to do before you start installing the app and deploying it through production. If you are replacing an existing app, um, make sure you have a plan to move the data over before giving access to users. And then, of course, um, along the way after you've installed, be sure to not only document sort of how to go about uh, managing the app, but also identifying what works and what doesn't work. Um, and on that same vein, measuring if you can sort of the effectiveness and the impact that that app has been providing to either, you know, increase revenue or reduce inefficiencies in your organization so that you can also bring, sort of show the impact that the app has provided. And then, of course, maintaining it going forward. So, you know, I know, Bill, there's a whole slew of things that need to be done during the post-install. Um, we sort of glean through them really fast. If there's sort of one thing in the post-install process that you would want to make sure that admins really remember and emphasize, what would that be? You guys are awesome admins. You're in there day-to-day -day rolling through the punches, and you're installing software, and you're meeting these business needs. Um, and you're going to get promoted one day whether it's in your organization or you're gonna to move to another organization. So my recommendation is document your work. Once the uh, application's installed into your Salesforce org and you've rolled it into production and walked through the software development lifecycle through QA and staging and then filing into production, um, 
make sure that there's some documentation in the event that a junior admin needs to look at your work or another admin because you moved on to greener pastures. So document your work and also really understand the difference between managed and unmanaged packages. In my previous experience, I've worked on orgs that unmanaged packages were a couple of versions behind. I worked on a finance application and it was about three years old and finance wanted some of the newer features. So you gotta continuously maintain the app. Go in there, just don't install it once. Like I mentioned earlier, document it, maintain it, and, and that's a part of our workflow. Awesome. So with that, to sort of recap sort of not only five tips, but also a lot of amazing, um, five steps, but also a lot of amazing tips offered by Bill on sort of how to go about building an app exchange strategy. So just to recap, you wanna make sure you're identifying who are the right stakeholders, working with them to identify the business needs and pain. Of course, going to App Exchange to find apps and test them out in either a sandbox or a dev org. Um, of course, going through your decision process and evaluating your choices. And then the most exciting part, of course, is installing, but then not forgetting about sort of what happens after you've installed. So documenting and maintaining and measuring. And so with that, hopefully this is a good sort of overview of how to go about building an App Exchange strategy. Um, if you want to dive a little deeper, there's a few resources um, that you can sort of check out. There's a blog post on the admin blog sort of recapping a lot of what we've shared today. If you're looking for additional tips on sort of how to go about picking the right types of apps, um, our app guides are a great tool and great resource to check out. We've released two so far, one focused on sales apps and one focused on back office. So if you're in finance, IT, ERP, or HR, or support in those departments. Great re resources to sort of check out and even get sort of a head start on some apps to think about um, when you're going through the evaluation process. And then of course, um, we love Trails, um, and so definitely check out our App Exchange Basics Trail module if you haven't done that already. Um, a great way to sort of learn or maybe revisit some of our App Exchange fundamentals. And with that, I'll turn it back to Mike. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Connie. Thanks, Bill. Um, so just to kind of recap, we have some resources for you. We're going to jump into Q&A, of course, if you have questions, and there's a few coming in. Be sure to put them as a separate post on our chatter group so that we don't have to at mention everybody. bit.ly backslash admin webinar group. Uh, of course, there's a survey. Tell us how we did. bit.ly backslash aw hyphen survey app. And the slides bit.ly backslash aw hyphen app strategy. So Connie, with that, I'm gonna jump into some questions. Uh, it sounds like uh, we have a really good framework going. Uh, do you have any, what are your recommendations for any shortcuts you'd have if per se admins are working under under a short timeline? Yeah, like you Bill, mentioned earlier. Oh, Go ahead, sorry, Bill. Connie. Yeah, so we mentioned earlier, I think one of the shortcuts is um, rely on your pre-sales engineer. These guys are experts in the app. You can get them to kind of install and configure it inside your sandbox. That's my little cheat sheet or my, my process cheating to getting it up quickly. Specifically when you're working with three, four, or five different apps to it for evaluation, you want to make sure that it's configured properly and we may not have the time to do that. That's awesome, Bill. And I think to sort of add other things we've also heard from, you know, not only my conversations with Bill, but with other admins, I think um, reiterating the tip that Bill had around sort of investing in app exchange, even just a little bit to sort of be able to preemptively figure out which apps you want to think about. So whether that's, you know, browsing through the site, um, going to your user group meetings to sort of see what apps um, other people in the community are loving. I think a lot of times that research can take some time. So I think even doing a little bit of that along the way, so you're prepared whenever any challenge comes your way. Because I know often, you know, as admins, you're dealt with sort of challenges and fires that need to be dealt with right away. So I think even just doing a little bit of that homework each week, I think could definitely cut some time out. Very cool. So we talked about sandboxes and we talked about kind of trying out apps. 
Uh, when testing on app in a sandbox or a developer edition org, you know, is it really sufficient to just test it out as yourself or when is it worth the time and, and extra time to involve other stakeholders in testing? Mike, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll grab that one. So I think as administrators, um, it's always a good idea to either get a quality assurance or other stakeholders, business unit champions. You should have at least one person in each group. So if you have one from sales, one from marketing, one from support, um, have like a champion to go in there and help you evaluate these applications. They know the business. We're the engineers, we know the software, we know Salesforce. However, they know how they're gonna use the application day to day. So I would say get those champions up front. Great. Uh, and then Connie, I think we talked a lot uh, about different apps. Um, are apps built on Heroku also available on the App Exchange? Yes, we do have a few um, that are listed on App Exchange, and we are actually exploring getting even more um, on App Exchange. So um, there's more to come, but there definitely are some, and we're even exploring um, getting some other elements um, that are built on Heroku onto App Exchange. So definitely more to come, but the short answer is yes. Oh, nice. And then I guess kind of our, our final question as we wrap up here, you know, we talked about documentation. Um, what type of documentation should be done after you install it? Is it just kind of how you use and manage the app or is there more that should be done around documentation? Mike, I'll go ahead and take that one. So what I do from, um, from let's say like a consultancy level perspective, I make sure that we're documenting how the business is using the application because a lot of the applications have point and click configuration, whether it's picklist fields, whether it's certain workflows, kind of capturing the business workflows and how to use the application. Um, I find that helpful for new admins, specifically if they're using an application, say for, um, they're using a third-party application and they don't know how to enter a user or they don't know how to configure some, some component of that application, that's the core essence that I think needs to be documented. And the reason why is a new admin who's taking over the responsibility will have to reverse engineer it, and that's where the pain comes in. There's always something. Well, Bill and Connie, thank you for taking time out of your day, and thank you for everyone who jumped in and took time out of your day to listen to the Salesforce admins webinar. Just a reminder, this was recorded and it will be posted to our YouTube page. So with that, have a fantastic Wednesday.